Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Matplotlib. I'll explain what Matplotlib is, and then I'll walk you through 10 examples step by step to show you exactly how to visualize your data. So Matplotlib is Python's most popular 2D plotting library. You can produce dozens of different plots with just a few lines of code in Matplotlib. And no matter what format your data is in, whether it's NumPy arrays, Pandas data frames, or Python lists, it's very easy to dump that data into a matplotlib function and graph your data so you can get a beautiful looking plot with very little code. So it gives you full control of line styles, font properties, axis properties, basically everything. You can create a blank chart and then you can add one element at a time to it with a single line of code. So whether it's a title, an axis, a curve, bars, Whatever you want to add to that chart, you can add it with a line of code and then display the final chart. So here are some examples. There are actually many different dozens of examples of charts that are available on the Matplotlib website and sample code for each one of them. So I encourage you to go there and check it out. These are some examples of what they have to offer. So I'm going to walk you through 10 examples and I'm running Python 3.6. First we need three import statements. We need to do import numpy as np importing pandas as pd and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and those are the conventions for importing those three libraries. And then our first sample we're going to just do a simple plot with four numbers. So plt.plot and then we have as the argument we're passing in a list of one, two, three, one, three, two, four. and then plt.show plt.show is the last command we're going to give at the end of every plot. First we start by adding elements to a plot or to a figure and then we do plt.show to display that plot. But we're basically layer, layering elements on top of the plot. So this is really just two lines of code to show this plot. Matplotlib generates the x and y axes itself based on the data. So you can see when we run this the output is basically a simple line graph. plt.plot is a line graph. For the second example, our points have x and y values. And we're also adding a title and axis labels. So the first set here, 1, 2, 3, 4, is the x values. And you can see those along the x-axis here. We have points at 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the y values are 1, 4, 9, 16. So you can see our scale on the y-axis goes up to 16. And we just pass those in separated by a comma using a plt.plot. So we're plotting x, comma, y. And then after we plot this line, we can also do plot.title, where we add a title, just a text string. Optionally, you can add arguments for the font size or the color if you want. I made a tiny eight-point green font here for this title just so it can stand out a little bit more. But you can use a default if you want and just you know, leave that out. Uh, and it'll still it'll give you a little bit bigger title. Let's look at the third example. So in example number three, we're going to change the figure size using uh, plt.figure. And we can pass in these, this argument fig size equals, and then it's a tuple, 2 comma 5. So x value and y value in inches. 2 inches wide by 5 inches tall. And you can see our plot actually came out 2 inches by 5 inches. Uh, and then we're also, we have x and y values, but we passed in a third argument to the plt.plot. We passed in r0, this string called r0. And basically r is the color, and 0 is the uh, shape of what we want to plot. So here we decided to plot a 0. Now if we decide to plot an x instead, we can do that. We can get a red x. Or if we want, let's say, a black x, we can do kx. And then plt.axis. This lets us force the axis to whatever scale we want. We saw previously that matplotlib will generate a standard axis based on what it thinks is right. But here I want to see a 0 to 6 axis on the x value on the x scale and a 0 to 20 on the y scale, even though my data only goes up to 16. So you can force the axis from 0 to 6 on the x, and that's a 0 to 20 on y. And then plt.annotate is a nice feature. You can add annotations to the graph. You can also add an arrow, but here I just added a text string, square it. And then you give a location for you want that to be x and y values in a tuple. So we put that at 3, 6, 
our little uh, annotation there in the graph, and then plot.show. So let's look at number four, bar charts with four bars. And you'll notice that in the output, we have name labels on each one of these, okay? We don't just have numeric labels. So I'll show you how to do that. First though, plt.clf is an important command. This allows you to clear everything from the figure programmatically. Like I said, when we add elements to a figure and then we show that figure, if you want to clear all the elements off of that figure, it deletes all the elements from the figure. The figure still exists, the object still exists, but we cleared all the elements off of that figure using CLF. We don't need to use that here, but I wanted to throw this in to explain it to you. X equals NP dot A range 4, so this is giving us 0, 1, 2, 3 for our X axis. Y is, uh, we have uh, four floating point values here that we're going to plot on the Y axis. And then PLT dot X ticks, we're using X ticks, X is our 0 to 4 list, and then we're going to assign these name values to those 0 to 4 points. And you can see the names coming out here. So this is how we do that, using X ticks. And then PLT dot bar, X comma Y. That's pretty simple. We just pass in the X and Y coordinates that we want to create a bar chart for. And we use the bar, bar command. We could also, uh, what we have here is all the bars come out blue. If we want color equals yellow, we could uh, we could try yellow. Um, if we run that, we'll get all yellow bars. Or if we want all different color bars, we can put a list of color equals and then um, four different colors in that list. So I have lime, red, K is black, and then tan, and we can see how that works. So that's kind of yucky, but you can actually put uh, different colors for each element on the graph. So let's look at example number five. In example number five, we have two sets of 10 random dots that we're plotting. So we have a red O and a green X. And those are our two sets. And we're just basically random dots. So we're using a pandas data frame. We're passing this dictionary of values into the data frame, into df. And then we do df.plot. The other thing we're doing unique here is we're using df, our data frame, to call the plot function. Data frames are actually able to call the matplotlib library directly. And then here we set the style equals to red O's and green X's. And as you can see, that's how it comes out. And then we get a little bonus. We get a legend here in the corner. Matplotlib throws the legend in for us because we have two different types of elements that we're graphing. And example number six is time series data. So we have six months of random floating point values. A, B, and C. We have three separate sets of values. So we started out with TS equals a time series. This is just uh, a series of dates starting from January 1, 2018 with 180 periods. So it's about six months of data. We're using a pandas data frame to create random floating point values. 180 by 3. So we have a, an array uh, that's th three axes. And A, B, and C are going to be the labels for those three axes. And then we're, instead of just plotting the uh, random values, which are all basically going to line up on top of each other, it's not a very pretty graph, we used, instead, we plotted the um, data frame cumulative sum of each one of those. So that there's a little bit of diversion. It's kind of a more interesting graph. And then we plot that. Anyway, this shows you that how to handle a data series in a graph using pandas. Next example, number seven, is uh, plotting random dots in a scatter diagram. So we have a scatter diagram here. You can see the dots have not only random sizes, but also uh, random colors. And so let's look at how that's done. So first we set n equals 50 so that we could use n as a constant throughout this code. And then we set x equal to uh, 50 random numbers and y equal to 50 random numbers. And these are 0 to 1 scale. These are uh, floating point values from 0 to 1. And then colors is 50 random color values and random values for the size. And then we um, call the scatter plot function, plt.scatter. We have to pass in our x and y coordinates for the positioning of the dots. And then we pass in the c equals colors, uh, s equals sizes, and then alpha is our transparency setting. So we've set a 50% transparency so that you can see the ones behind. And then plt.show. And here's what you get. Next, we're actually going to load some data from a file and plot that. I thought it would be most interesting if we could use a file that we used in the past, I think I used this for my pandas demo, fremont.weather. We're going to import that and then print it out. And so you can see what the data frame looks like here. 
we have average high, average low, record high, record low, average precipitation values for 12 different months throughout the year. And then what we're going to do is add elements to the graph. PLT.bar, so we're going to first plot a bar chart, the red chart if you can see it. That's in the background. That's the first one we put down so that everything else is going to be plotted on top of it. And we use data frame month and data frame record high. So month is the X value and record high is the Y value. And then we plot another bar chart on top of that using month as the X value and record low as the Y value. And the color is cyan. It actually looks kind of teal in the graph here, you'll see. And then on top of that, we plotted two line charts, so plt.plot. Again, using month as the X, and we used average high and average low. We plotted all four of those values into a single chart. So you can see that it's pretty easy, really, to plot a combination of both bar and line charts into a single chart. And then we also added a legend and used plt.show. Now let's look at example number nine, where we're going to explore subplots. Subplots, here first, the easiest way to explain is to look at it. So subplots are basically when you want to plot multiple plots into a single figure. Now this is one figure, and we have four plots, subplots. And the code looks like this, fig equals subplot.figure. So we create a new figure, and then we do fig.subtitle. Okay, we set my subplots as the title here. That's pretty straightforward. Fig.add subplot 221. Now we've added one subplot, which is this top left one. If we want to plot something on that, this line here is plt.plot. That's our line. And then uh, you can see the log in for in and range 1 to 10. So that's really just a logarithmic curve that we plotted onto this top left subplot. Our next subplot is 222, and that has a face color of Y. You can see that here, yellow. The other two I didn't put any plots on. Fig.add subplot 223 is the bottom left. Fig.add subplot 224 is the bottom right. So you can add as many subplots as you want. Here we added four different subplots to this one chart or one figure. And then you can add as many different elements and different axes. You can do all the same stuff that you do to the plots that we showed up above in subplots. Part two of subplots. Here we actually have two subplots stacked on top of each other. And we did that using share x equals true. We did fig, comma, plots. Fig is the figure, and then plots is actually a list, a two-item list from 0 to 1, 2 is non-inclusive, of subplots. And then when we, we show the plots, we call plots of 0 and plots of 1. And plots of 0 is a line plot. Plots of 1 is a scatter plot. So you can see the difference here. And you can see that they also both have the same x-axis because we did share x equals true. And this is just a range from 0 to 200 in increments of 5 of into the 0 0.8 power. So that's how subplots work, and there's actually a lot of flexibility in how you show subplots. You can put them side by side. You can put different sizes. You can put a full size, full height subplot on the left and a two half height subplots on the right, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of flexibility in subplots. And final example here, we're going to look at how to save an image to a file. So this is just a standard plot, really. We, we plotted flight data here. We set a fig size equal to 4, comma 3, so you can see our fig size is a little different. Um, we set DPI equal to 100. That's just a resolution setting. You can set the resolution to a higher resolution setting of your figure if you want. We plot a sequence of eight values. Then we set the axes on a scale of 0 to 7 and 0 to 300. So you can see our y-axis is 0 to 300. And title we set to flight data, and x-axis label speed, and then we save the figure. And so we can also show the figure if we want. We don't have to show the figure, but if we want to save the figure, we need plot.savefig, and then we put in a string for the file name, and it's going to save this file to that file name. So it's that simple to save a file. So I hope you like my uh, Jupyter Notebook style presentation here. This is the first one I've done in Jupyter. And I, I welcome, actually, any feedback on how you like this type of presentation in Jupyter, how you like to flow and everything. And also, I hope you'll experiment with the code. I'll post this Jupyter notebook, and I also have just the code in a regular text file. I'm going to post those on my GitHub page so you can download the code and play with it all you want. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.